So a few days ago, there was a video posted up that was pretty popular, and it was talking about DirectX 12 and EA and kind of moving the gaming industry forward. So I wanted to talk about it because I felt like there was a lot of misinformation in the video, and so I wanted to try to set the record straight for anybody who walked away believing something that just simply wasn't true. So several days ago on April 8th, I did a video talking about how the EA technical developer was on Twitter saying that he would like to see Windows 10 and DirectX 12 as the minimum specs required for games by the end of 2016. And he said himself that this was a bit aggressive, but that the benefits were just too great. So on April 11th, uh, Review Tech USA picked up on the story and he did a video on the subject, but we saw the issue completely in a different light. And to be honest, I felt like uh, his video was like 75% of just flat out wrong misinformation. So let me give you a few quotes from Rich's video. He begins by saying, Johan Anderson had a silly ass moment on Twitter the other day talking about DirectX 12, and then he read the tweet that was made. And then he goes on to say, it's not like we're a couple of generations in on graphics cards for DirectX 12. Those cards were just released and aren't even released. And he was talking about uh, announced cards that haven't hit the market just yet. He goes on by saying, so that means all the other tens of millions of gamers who still have like 780 Ti's or any other Titan beside the new Titan X... Their cards won't work with the games you want to release. It's just not realistic, man. You can't do that to PC gamers. One of the nice things about PC gaming is you've been able to have a GPU for four or five years. Hell, if you have the GTX 480, you can still do pretty damn decent gaming with that card. But then for everyone else out there who just last year maybe bought a 780 or a 780 Ti or 770, any other Titan beside the Titan X... You want to screw them over after they've invested hundreds or thousands of dollars into their hardware. And he goes on to say repeatedly that, you know, you'd be screwing over PC gamers if EA went through with this and decided to make the minimum specs DX12 and Windows 10 by the end of 2016. And he goes on to say that they need to wait a couple more years to take full advantage of DirectX 12. He says, don't piss off the customer by wanting to take advantage of new technology. It's not a good idea. So Rich listed off a lot of cards, a lot of expensive cards that he claimed wouldn't work with DX12. So let's begin with the lowest common denominator, the GTX 480. There are literally hundreds of articles dating back well over a year that have made it clear that you do not need to buy a new GPU to run DX12 games. You do not need to buy a new GPU to take advantage of DX12. Extreme Tech, virtually every single GPU from the GTX 400 to present day. GameSpot, new graphics cards not essential for DirectX 12. But let's go right to the source, NVIDIA's blog. Over 70% of gaming PCs are now DX11 based. NVIDIA will support the DX12 API on all the DX11 class GPUs it has shipped. And these belong to the Fermi, Kepler, and Maxwell architecture families. The idea that you need a new card to play DX12 games is 100% a false narrative that is completely wrong. If you can run DX12, you're going to see benefits, we're being told. It's going to take advantage of the API and the features that you've been hearing about as far as taking advantage of the CPU, etc. Now, there are additional features that are going to be coming specifically to DX12 that only brand new cards are going to be taken advantage of. And we don't even know what those features are yet. They haven't even been announced. But not having full features is not the same as saying you won't be able to take advantage of any features or it's not going to work with any games that support it. That having extra features, no games, 
not the same thing. And honestly, I don't think it's a silly ass idea at all for EA to want to push forward to using the new technology. Especially since it's a free upgrade for the vast majority of the people. I mean, they had, you know, clips at the at the very beginning whenever they first announced this saying that the vast majority of PC gamers are already going to be compliant with this. So, people are going to get the option to do a free upgrade and EA is wanting to take advantage of it. And I mean, how many times have we heard, especially from the PC crowd, about how consoles are holding gaming back? Talking about how if the Master Race could be just unleashed from these console ports, then we would all be in gamer utopia. But you know what's holding PC gaming back? It isn't the consoles. GTA 5 sure doesn't look like it was held back by the consoles. It's the tech. And you've got AMD, you've got Nvidia, you've got developers, you've got Microsoft all telling you this. So now new tech is right around the corner and you're saying we should bench it for a couple of years. That's crazy. I actually applaud the devs who are wanting to push forward. You don't wait years, especially when your business revolves around technology, to start using technology. And if you've got a major publisher like EA that's leading the pack, then honestly I hope everyone else will fall in line. Your old games are still going to run. Your newer games are actually going to look and play like newer games. If you want to move the gaming industry forward, then I suggest we actually support devs who are trying to push it forward and not try to call them out claiming that they have silly ass ideas, especially when they're one of the most brilliant people in the industry. And most of you know that the ones of us who do news type channels like myself, we're, we're not journalists in the sense that we went to journalistic school. We don't have degrees for this. We aren't professional in that sense. We're hobbyists, we're entertainers, we're researchers, etc. So, I mean, of course we're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. Even professionals make mistakes. But I do believe that when you have a large audience, which I don't, you know, I'm small potatoes when it comes to most channels. But even when you get to the level that I'm at, I think you have a responsibility to make sure that you're giving the audience as much factual information as possible. And you know, some topics I don't cover because I don't have enough information on it or I don't understand it enough to talk about it, so I don't talk about it. And when I do make mistakes, I'm going to try to correct it, and I hope I'm the first one to correct it. So anyway, you know, there it is. I know a lot of people enjoyed Rich's video. I like Rich's videos. I subscribe to his channel, obviously. That's how I stumbled upon it. This isn't to start a beef with Rich, but I know a lot of people walked away from that video having, you know, taken Rich for what he says and, and believing, you know, the words that are coming out of his mouth and walked away probably believing that EA is going to screw up by trying to take advantage of DX12. And I think that is just a, a terrible thing for thousands of people to walk away believing when it's 100% wrong. If you want to read about what cards are supported on DX12, links down in the description box. Stay tuned right here and to VGN for your latest gaming news. That does it for me, the Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Are you listening? Damn.